And we are here for you. Our prayer lines, as I said earlier, are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I just want to remind you, please take advantage of those. Even on Christmas, on holidays, there will always be someone there to answer the prayer line. So please give us a call if you need somebody to talk to or pray with. Well, Alvin Slaughter, we are so glad that you have taken time out of your busy globe-trotting schedule to spend I some time with us here on the couch. Here. And we just want to start talking to you like this. Like hey, that. Alvin. Like with our hand in the air like you. Yeah, like that was so. amazing. Oh, uh, well, was thank you. Thank you know you what? It is so <laughs> hard to sit still while you're singing. I mean, we're over here. We're, we're really ready like to go. It's hard for me to sit still because generally I like a stage where I can move around, do backflips, swing from the chandelier. Oh, really? Oh, see what we're missing. Well, come on, not Brooklyn Tavern. I require to sway. Sway. Oh, well, we got to do You got to sing back up for me next time. So oh, we'll okay. dance. Oh, yeah. And we'll wear matching costumes. That'll do <laughs> You know what? We can probably wonderful. do the sway, but you better <laughs> leave the microphones turned off. Antichrist okay. Singer. Oh she yeah. Sing. Oh yeah. Melinda's <laughs> Melinda's singer. our closet singer. She is just really looking for an opportunity singer. to get up there in front of an audience. It always starts in the closet. It doesn't start on the big stage. It yeah. starts in the closet with a hairbrush or, exactly. or a mirror. Oh, or yeah. Exactly. And then after Sometimes that, the world. It should stay there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, Alvin. I mean, we all recognize the the beautiful giftings God has given you vocally, you. but really, it it took took music to yeah. bring you to a point where you were ready to surrender yeah. your talent to God. You know, it's interesting. I never uh, started out to be a singer. Uh, I wanted to be an accountant. <laughs> I would have been a pretty bad accountant. <laughs> uh, God knew what he was doing. You know, the thing about it, when I came, gave my heart to the, to the Lord when I was about 13 years old, I was told that you've got to serve God in the church. So I just joined the choir. Mm -hmm. And in the process, I was singing a song. I'm just watching the sweat off my hand. Mm -hmm. I was singing the song in the church. And I remember it was like an old black Baptist church. We had what we call the mothers of the church in all in white, white dresses, white things on their head, white cotton stockings, white shoes, look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. And um, I remember singing and they were crying and the younger ladies were kind of dancing in the aisles. Now I wasn't thinking about, oh, look at how God is blessing. I'm thinking, hey man, I feel like the black Elvis. This is kind of cool. So, <laughs> yeah. so I just kept singing and eventually I started working with choirs and, and, and uh, youth groups and before you know it, uh, people started inviting us to sing different places and weddings and I was a funeral king of Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> weddings and funerals and then before that just it just kind of it grew into this ministry which is so overwhelming to me and I'm still overwhelmed. This is my 18th year of doing it. I'm still blown away that God can use us in this way. So it's pretty amazing but to me. But you've had a rocky, you know, little bit of a life, you know? Like yeah. you, you know, when you're reading through sort of your testimony, your story, yeah. it, was, it was sort of started and then kind of Got a little back and yeah. then kind of kept forward. And Actually, Alvin introduced me to a whole new word, hellacious. <laughs> you said you had a hellacious <laughs> It was yeah. hellacious. You know what's funny about church and Christianity is that, you know, I love the church. I'm, I can't tell you that I love all the things about what we call mm -hmm. church today. And I'm not sure how close what we call church today is still church. Um, but, you know, I grew up in a church that was a good church, but we went through a lot of different things. And it was... A lot, of, a lot of ways legalistic. If women wore makeup or jewelry or pants or stuff like or that. Or red. Red, you pretty much be going to hell, you know, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, you know, if, if, you were, if a men went to movies or listened to music that wasn't Christian music, you're going to go to hell. And in the process, there's just a lot of self-hate because you can never measure up to this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I get married and by the time I was 24, I have three babies. I'm about as ready to be married as this table is. Mm -hmm. uh, in the process, in the next six, 14 years, I had 16 jobs and I failed at every last one of them. And we were on welfare with public assistance. Uh, my wife and I did not get along and, and we hated each other. And now we have three kids and life is not working. Then I go to church and they say, you're more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ. And people are praising the Lord. And I feel like, man, I wish I could be like them. But I have to play the game because I'm the lead singer. I'm a choir director. Mm -hmm. And on the inside, I felt that God loved me, but he didn't like me. Mm -hmm. And in the process, we got to a point where we just, it just wasn't working anymore. I, I, I started having affairs on my wife uh, and, I, and I eventually left her. And I left her with my babies. And um, angry at God, so depressed I wouldn't take baths for weeks at a time, living back with my mother, wife, and babies, living in a studio basement apartment in Queens. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget, my wife used to pray and say, oh God, oh God, touch Alvin, change his life, uh, you know, let him serve you again. And the more she prayed, the worse I got. Yeah. And finally, Gloria changed her prayer, and she started praying, God, it's either you're a liar or I'm praying the wrong prayer. So she said, dear Lord, you can have the Negro. I don't want him. He's yours. <laughs> you know, and she stopped being 
stopped beating herself up when I went to her house uh, to borrow money. <laughs> she was no longer sitting there crying, her face breaking out, her hair falling out. She fixed her face up, she did her hair, and even though she was still weak on the inside, she was strong on the outside. And to make a real long story short, we went to this church, Brooklyn Tabernacle. We didn't go, I went. And the only reason I went was because I got so sick of being alone. And I went to this multicultural church. And I don't know about in Canada here, but in, in the States, multicultural church was not a big thing at that time. You had black churches and white churches. I mean, I didn't even think that black people, white people, people of different colors could worship together. You know, people of color, we clap on the two and four. <laughs> white people clap on the one and three. I mean, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't, it just, but I remember sitting in this church and I remember hearing the people sing. I didn't even like their music, but there was something about it that was infectious to me. Mm -hmm. And I went back to my mother's house and I went to bed that night and I saw the people singing in my mind. To this day, I cannot remember a song the first time, but I heard the people singing. I could see their faces. Some had their hands raised. I didn't know what that meant. Some were crying. I said, why are they crying? But I just knew something was happening. And I didn't want to hear it, but at the end of the day, I realized what God was doing. You know, he was wooing me like a lover. Mm -hmm. He was pursuing me, and I, I kind of say now he was killing me softly with his song. Interesting and, uh, point. You would leave before the sermon just oh, to take heart. Oh, I'd leave you for the You didn't stay for yeah, the message. It was, it was too much for me, and I was thinking, you know what? Uh, if I stay, I know that I'm going to go down to that altar thing, and I'm the biggest guy in the church, and I'm not going down there. And um, uh, for about a year, I did that. And God took a heart of stone, made a heart of flesh. Restored us back together. You know, I mean, it's amazing. This year, my wife and I, we celebrate 30 years of being married. Oh, and with three, three, uh, three grown kids, two grandbabies, and a daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. and a grand dog. Uh, <laughs> but, a in grand the, dog. but in the process, I've just seen so many things that God has done. I mean, even in recent times, i just seen what God has done. I mean, just three years ago, I battled this depression thing. And it wasn't depression because I was sad. I was depression. I didn't want to sing anymore. I didn't want to go to church anymore. I still loved God, but I just thought it was broke and it wasn't working. And I realized that what God was doing, he said to me, Alvin, I'm not interested in you just being a singer anymore. Mm -hmm. I want you to have a voice. Mm -hmm. So.